Today I want to talk about the biggest story in college football this weekend, Tua Tonga Valoa's injury and what's going to happen next with his injury and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> what's up kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Tua Tonga Valoa's ankle injury. He suffered the injury in a win against Tennessee, but depending on how you want to draw this up, could be a major loss for not just Tua, but Alabama and their hopes of winning the national championship this year, which already felt just a little bit more fragile than they have felt in years past for Nick Saban's squad. One of the reasons for that was the extensive turnover by his assistant coaching staff, and another was the injuries they'd already sustained, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. They're having to play four really talented but true freshmen in their front seven, and they've been really good on the back end. Trevin Diggs has been great. Patrick Sertain has been great. Xavier McKinley has been awesome. That said, Tua Tonga Valoa is the straw that stirs the drink. Tua has had over 2,100 yards passing this year. He's been nothing short of brilliant. He hasn't put up the same sort of pass efficiency rating that he did last year, but who could? I mean, he was at 200, he's sitting at like 184. He's absolutely outstanding in that regard. I also found it to be pretty awesome that he has all of these weapons at his disposal, not to mention just, you know, Jerry Judy, who we know won the Bolitnikoff Award last year and is looking to repeat this year. But guys like Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, and of course, Devontae Smith in the backfield. He's had guys like Najee Harris and Brian Robinson, and he has been great. Now, with his injury, we know that it was a high ankle sprain, and we know that he had a tightrope procedure on Sunday morning. Tightrope procedure is sort of like a zip tie for your ankle to hold your tibia and fibula together so that there's more stability there. That said, it's supposed to take a minimum of two weeks. In the case of Tonga Valoa, it has taken two weeks. He had the same procedure done last December on his left ankle. So I made jokes in you know, my big happy national football recap about his, you know, tiny dancer ankles, his walking Melinda ankles and the tightrope deal. But it's not really a laughing matter for Alabama fans who want him to be healthy for LSU. And he might be good enough to go. As a matter of fact, I think if you made, made if you had to play that game tomorrow, he would be the quarterback. It's about how much closer to 100% he will be by the time they have to play that game on November 9th. So they basically get a two-week buy here because they play Arkansas, and they could trot out the third string against Arkansas, still get a W, and it'd be fine. Then they get a complete week off, and then they welcome LSU to Tuscaloosa, and this is one case in which the home field advantage has to feel absolutely great for Alabama in a year where LSU has put it together offensively and defensively. They have three outstanding DBs at LSU, four guys that I expect to play in the NFL at one point or another, and the idea of Mac Jones having to throw against them is just not what you're into if you're an Alabama fan. It's not to say that Mac Jones can't be that good. It's that he's not as good as Tua Tagovailoa, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of like with Kyler Murray last year. Austin Kendall wasn't as good as him, and there's nothing wrong with that. You could say the same thing about Kendall and Baker Mayfield the year before that. And since Tagovailoa showed up, he was better than Jalen Hurts. And all Jalen Hurts is doing is putting his name first, second, or third, depending on how you feel about it, in the Heisman conversation at Oklahoma, which is another facet of this. Until this, I thought Tua had a really good chance of winning the Heisman Trophy with a win against LSU and an undefeated run to the SEC Championship with a win. Now, with the numbers being what they are and both Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts being completely healthy and playing through the next couple of weeks, or, you know, LSU, I think believe I think they get a bye. I, I got to look that up. I didn't check that out. I do know that Burrow is healthy. I know that Hurts is healthy. I know that they're putting up some gaudy numbers. Jalen Hurts has 30 touchdowns through seven games. He's put up nearly 2,700 yards. No, he's put up more than 2,700 yards of offense with over 2,000 yards passing, 700 yards on the ground. He's been outstanding. Joe Burrow has been a passing efficiency machine. In his latest outing, 24-32 for 327 against Mississippi State, we saw him carve up Florida 
for 293 yards on 21 and 24 passing. This feels like Joe Burrow's Heisman to lose with a win against Alabama in an unbeaten run through to the SEC championship. But Jalen Hurts is the dark horse here. Well, it's not a dark horse. He is very much in this conversation because one of those two quarterbacks has to lose to the other in Tua Tonga Valoa and Joe Burrow when they play on November 9th. If that happens and you got a neck and neck race between Jalen Hurts and the other two, I feel like Jalen Hurts is going to get the sympathy vote from many Heisman voters who just like his story and think it sets a really good example for kids that perhaps would go into the transfer portal otherwise or don't want to stick it out at the school that they have chosen to commit and sign with in the first place. So they might want to make a statement there. You also get tremendous help from national radio and national television. Guys like Paul Feinbaum being very out there with their sympathy vote for Jalen Hurts saying, hey, if it's close, I'm going to give that kid my vote because I just want to see him win the Heisman. wouldn't hurt their feelings at all. And the Heisman is not a national championship. So, of course, Bama fans won't be that upset if Jalen Hurts wins it. They might even try to claim it as their Heisman trophy, not unlike the Aggies tried to do with Kyler Murray, which I would frown at you if you did, Bama fans, because you're better than that. However... When it comes to the national title implications of this, we know that he's going to be coming back from a surgery during the middle of the year. This is not playing two games like the last time they did last year. So how good is that ankle? How good are both of those ankles? Having any sort of surgery done is not a minor thing, even as they call it minor surgery. They actually have to open the skin. They got to go in there and they got to put stuff into your body. No, your body's going to to take some time to heal. And with Alabama having a really tough stretch here, the month of November they play LSU and what is a Auburn team that is good enough to beat them if not defensively, or excuse me, offensively, then defensively, the Iron Bowl is always squirrely. And knowing that Nick Saban has all of these balls in the air with his new assistant coaches, with his puppy front seven, with his quarterback having to have surgery midway through because, well, he suffered a high ankle sprain against Tennessee, I'm really interested to see how well Alabama holds it together through all of this because they'll say, to heck with the Heisman Trophy. We want to win a national championship. Haven't really won one in a few years, and you got to go back. Play for a couple, and of course they got embarrassed by Clemson in last year's national title game, but you got to believe that they want to a healthy, and the rest of the country is going to wait. And if you haven't already been fading Alabama in the LSU game, you're going to start doing it now because... Knowing that Tua is probably going to be back for that doesn't change that he's probably not going to be completely healthy for it. Could put in a gutsy performance, could be outstanding, it could not matter. But I think it will because every injury seems to matter to most teams and most schools, especially at the quarterback position and especially when Tua is responsible for so much of your offense, how dynamic it is, and really... When you're talking about what Steve Sarkeesian gets to call up, a lot of it is what Tua Tagovailoa is good at and not necessarily having to depend on their run game. And I'm not saying that Mac Jones would make you dependent on the run game. I am saying that you are much more likely to try to stop the run and force Mac Jones to beat you if, if he's not as good as Tua Tagovailoa, and I don't think he is. Arkansas also has an outside chance here to upset Alabama, as wild as that seemed. Because they're going to be doing some new things with their quarterback. And yeah, they could take a loss and still not drop out of the top five. But I would want them to for the same reason that Illinois taking a loss against, or excuse me, Wisconsin taking a loss against Illinois drops them out of the playoff conversation. That's where it gets interesting. It's Arkansas could pull off an upset in this year where myself and others have made all the jokes in the world about Chad Morris and all the jokes in the world about the Razorbacks. Hey, man, maybe they think that they can pull one out. And if John Chavis can call the game of his life, I wouldn't doubt that. I wouldn't put it past them at all. Not right now with Tua. Yeah, of course. Mac Jones? We don't really know Mac Jones. And I I get it. Alabama fans know all about him. But I think there's a reason as to why he was backing up Tua Tagovailoa and not starting. We'll find out all of this. But this is a fascinating story, and I'm going to continue to talk about it here on the show and on my radio show and all over because it's just that big a deal. All right, that is it for me. Doses.